A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, this is what I command my people. Listen to my voice, then I will be your God and you shall be my people. Walk in the ways that I command you so that you may prosper. But they obeyed not, nor did they pay heed. They walked in the hardness of their hearts and turned their backs, not their faces, to me. From the day that your fathers left the land of Egypt, even to this day, I have sent you untirely, all my servants, the prophets. Yet they have not yet obeyed me, nor paid heed. They have stiffened their necks and done worse than their fathers. When you speak all these words to them, they will not listen to you either. When you call to them, they will not answer you. Say to them, this is a nation that does not listen to the voice of the Lord its God or take corrections. Faithfulness has disappeared. The word itself is banished from their speech. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. On that today you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as, the, as in the day of Masha in the desert, where your father tempted me. They tested me though they had not seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. And when the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the crowds were amazed. Some of them said, By the power of Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others, to test him, asked for a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts, and he said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, and house will fall against house. And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say it is by Beelzebul that I drive out demons. If I then drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your own people drive them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his palace, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the armor on which he had relied and distributes the spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. The Gospel of the Lord. I normally like to focus 
uh, in these little homilets in the daily masses on the first reading, but I think there's enough that is important to be unpacked in this gospel reading that we want to look at it. The first thing to say is that we are starting to get into a more direct kind of conflict between, between Jesus and either the authorities or other people listening to him. This is a kind of a prelude to the, the theme that is going to be the overwhelming theme of the gospel after this coming Sunday. Okay? The second half of Lent focuses much more intensely on the conflicts between Jesus and the authorities. We're getting a bit of a taste of it here. What we had been getting these last couple of weeks have been general calls to repentance. Now it's getting a bit more focused. We need to look at the parable with which Jesus ends this, this unit also, because sometimes it's confusing for people to, to figure it out. The strong man fully armed is Satan. Okay? And as long as he's in control, everything is fine. But when someone stronger than Satan shows up, Jesus, that's the end of the battle. Satan is despoiled, and Jesus can collect all the armor, metaphorically speaking, that Satan was relying on. He can distribute the spoils to the people in victory with him. Okay, so that's the point of that saying, and just to let it be clarified for people. Now let's look for a second on the charge. By the power of Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Why would anybody say something like that? Let's be clear that it isn't because these are mean-spirited, hate-filled people. Okay? They're confused. They're honestly confused. Because here's Jesus doing all kinds of wonderful signs. The people are amazed. Casting out demons, healing people. And yet at the same time, seeming to give himself a relationship to God that, for some people, is blasphemous, number one. Number two, seeming to disregard some of the Holy Covenant, most particularly the Sabbath. And so they're, they're divided, they're confused. What's going on here? And the reason why they're confused is, that is it possible that these miracles are being performed for the precise purpose of leading people away from God. Maybe. Maybe. And in the so-called little apocalypses that we get in the Gospels, at the end of the Gospels, Jesus says things like that. He says, at the end, people are going to be saying, oh, there's the Messiah, here's the Messiah. Don't go after them. And they're going to be performing signs and wonders. So much so, if possible, even to lead astray the elect. So signs and wonders in and of themselves don't prove where a person comes from. This is the classic thrust of Mark's gospel primarily. Jesus has power. Now the only question left is, what is the authority by which he has the power? Which way does it go? For me, we find the answer, or we will find the answer liturgically in about three weeks. In the meantime, we can ask the question sincerely. If we were there, what would we think? Whom would we follow? And where would we make a commitment? Let us stand and pray.